So let's do some more logarithm examples. For this first one, we've got a log base 7. So the thing to remember about logarithm is when you do the derivative, the derivative of any logarithm is going to be 1 over x as part of it. So having this 2 out in front, that 2 is still going to be out in front. We're going to have a 1 over x, but we remember from the log slide that we had just before that if it's a base of 7, you're going to also have to multiply by the natural log of 7 on the bottom. And so you could write this as 2 over x natural log of 7 as your final answer. Because here we have, whenever we have a log of a different base, we're multiplying by the natural log of that base on the bottom. And just like we had before, we're going to often have to rewrite our functions first so that they're in a form that we can do things in. So we see a square root, probably getting quite used to changing square roots to x to the half by now. So first changing that square root to look like this, and then deciding what kind of laws do we have here? What do we have to implement? Can you see that this one is a product law? That you've got one function, 7x to the half first, and then you're multiplying by an e to the x. So we keep one the same, do the derivative of the other one, plus keep the other one the same, do the derivative of the first one. And of course, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So in the first term here, I kept the 7x to the half the same. And then the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Then I kept the e to the x the same and did the derivative of the 7x to the half, which me meant that I brought the half in front and subtracted 1 from the exponent. This is 7 half x to the power negative 1 half. So here's one for you to try. You're going to have a product law. So 1 times the 3x squared is going to stay the same. And then the derivative will be 1 over x. Plus, then you keep the natural log x the same. The derivative of 3x squared will be 6x. So simplifying this a little bit, now the 3x squared times 1 over x will become 3x. You might notice there's a 3x in common. So if you're looking at in your answer key in the back of your textbook, the answer might look like this in the factored form. Of course, there's other ways you can manipulate this too. Do you remember your logarithm rules? Like this 2 out in front, we could also write this as a squared. So all of those logarithm rules that you had from before, whenever we have an opportunity, I'll try to remind you of them so that you can go, oh yeah, I kind of remember that. And that'll just help you remember it a little bit better. All right, so keep the bottom the same. Multiply by the derivative of the top. Now, the derivative of the 3 will just be 0, and the derivative of 5 e to the x will be 5 e to the x. Then you subtract, keep the top the same. The derivative of the bottom is just 2x over the bottom squared. Again, here we have a quotient rule. If you keep the bottom the same, the derivative of the top, negative 1 over x minus. And if we were about to simplify this, well, you can write x to the minus 1. It's the same as 1 over x, yeah. So 
Once we've got this part, if we wanted to simplify it as it would be in the back of the textbook, well, this x to the 5 times the minus 1 over x will just become a minus x to the 4. And then we have an x to the 4. That's what we're going to do. We're going to just have an x to the 4. We're going to be left with minus 1 there in the first one, minus 5 times 2 minus natural log of x. Well, we're going to have the minus 1 over x here, and that's the derivative of minus natural log of x. Now, when I multiply the x to the fifth times this minus 1 over x, it's still going to be negative, but it's going to be a negative x to the fourth. And if I take out an x to the fourth so that I can simplify this and this to be left with an x to the six. then my final answer will look like that. Yeah? Yes. And so you could also have started this question to begin with by moving the x to the 5 up to the top, making an x to the minus 5, then you're dealing with your product law instead of your quotient law. And if you like that better, you're going to get similar results. Because when you subtract 1 from the exponent on that x to the minus 5, what are you going to get? You're going to get an x to the minus 6, which matches up with the x to the 6 that we have on the bottom here. So that sort of does some of the factoring things for you, but there's still some work that you would need to do. So whatever, the, you know, when you look at your answer key and how it's written, You've got those two choices of how to start, and both of them will help you manipulate to get to an answer that looks like that. Yes? So again, square root of x. Take the time to change that to a rational exponent. Here we've got e to the x to the x. Wow, an exponent within an exponent. But it's not too bad. Can you see that this is a chain rule? that that square root of x is inside of the e to the x. So our first derivative, the derivative of the outside function, is just that e to the x. And that wouldn't change anything. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, bring the 1 half out in front and subtract 1 from the exponent. And this too, you could multiply the 4 and the half together to simplify that. rules do we have here? Product rule and a chain rule. You see that that 5x is inside the natural log? So that's going to be a chain rule. What's that? Would it be on the bottom? Mm, well, yes, when you do the derivative, because the derivative of natural log is 1 over x, so whatever's in the x spot, the derivative of that is going to be here, 1 over 5x. Because we have a chain rule. Yeah, so here, let's just look at natural log of 5x. Let's say you have another function that's y equals natural log of 5x, and you just wanted to do the derivative of that. Well, this is a chain rule because the 5x is inside the natural log. So we have to do the derivative of natural log first. Now, the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. But now the 5x is where the x normally is, so it will be 1 over 5x then the thing that we haven't done is the chain rule, the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is 5x, so we multiply by 5 afterwards. Okay? What ends up happening? 5 simplify, and this is just 1 over x. Ooh. 
Will it work like that for every time that there is a number in front? If it was a 7x, yes. If it was a 10x, yes. If it was a 10x plus 1, then no. And I'll show you why. And this is another great time to review some of our log logs. Because inside here, I've got natural log of 5 times x. Do we have a log law when we multiply inside of a function? Yes. Multiplying inside of the function is the same as adding. So now, if I would have used my log laws to rewrite this to begin with as natural log of 5 plus natural log of x, then I could have done the derivative of just this. Now, natural log of 5 is a number. e to what power is going to equal 5? It's going to be like 1 point something. I don't know what that number is exactly. But it's important to recognize when something's a number, just a constant. Because when you do the derivative of a constant, you get 0. So when I do the derivative, looking at this, I would get 0 plus 1 over x, which makes the same thing happen as when those 5s cancel out. Of course, it probably makes it easier to think of the chain rule than go back to your log laws, but that's the reason why that turned out that way. Had this been five x plus one inside, then your derivative would have started. Same thing, one over exactly what's inside, multiply by the derivative inside, which would be multiplying by five. But that doesn't, you can't just simplify this five and the five there. So this one would stay as 5 over 5x five plus 1. And those 5s couldn't be simplified because this is grouped as one term right now. Unless you factored out that 5 and made it x plus 1 fifth, then you could cancel out those 5s. But that wouldn't really help you. So this would have to stay like that. I think that the chain rule inside natural log is the hardest one to see because it feels weird, first of all, to have 1 over and then to still multiply by something after that. Oh, basically just did this question. But now it's a 6, so it's so much harder. Upped it one level. So there it is. I must have known when I was making my notes originally that that would naturally fall as the next question I would think of asking. So here do you see that there's going to be a product rule and a chain rule again? Keep one the same, do the derivative of the second one. When you do the derivative of e x to the 4, well, the outside function is e to the x, so it stays the same. And then the derivative of the inside function, x to the 4, is 4x cubed. Then you keep the second one the same and multiply by the derivative of the first. So just a little diagram at the bottom, thinking here I've got two functions. One of them is e to the x, one of them is x to the 4. Can I see that f of g of x is e to the x to the 4? That g of x is inside of the other function. Yes. Now, this one may appear at the beginning to look like a quotient rule. But I would say anytime you have a quotient where the top is just a constant, it will be easier for you to bring the bottom up to the top, because then you won't have to do a quotient rule or a product rule. You'll just be able to do the derivative. In this case, there will be a chain rule. So the cube root is 1 third. Bringing it to the top would make a negative 1 third. Can you see that this is a chain rule with a chain rule inside of it? So how do we go about this? Well, our most 
outside function is the negative one-third. So the first thing you would do is bring that negative one-third out in front and subtract one from the exponent. Keep the inside the same. Then you look at that inside and say, can I do the derivative of that? Well, the derivative of 7 is 0, but the derivative of e to the minus 3x is another chain rule with the outside function being e to the minus 3x. The derivative of e to the minus 3x stays the same, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, minus 3. That while the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so whenever you have anything e to the cos of x, when you do the derivative of that, it's going to start by staying the same. But then it's a chain rule, so here y prime, it's going to start because your outside function is e to the x, and the derivative of e to the x says keep it the same. And then the derivative of the inside function, you say, well, what's the derivative of the cos? Wait, Negative sine x. Jeremiah Smith, please work the office for an essay. And could we please have the following students discuss the office for an essay as well? So here's an example of a chain rule within a chain rule with cosecant. Are you ready for this? So let's make our function y equals, we'll start with cosecant of e to the x cubed. So our outside function is cosecant. Inside of that is e to the x to the 4, which is another chain rule, because our outside function there would be e to the x with x to the 4 inside of that. So can you see that there's a function inside of a function inside of a function? So if we were doing the derivative of this, the most outside function is cosecant. What's the derivative of cosecant? It's negative cosecant cotangent. Now, the reason I find this one's hard for people, not because they can't spell cosecant, but the inside stays the same. So you're going to have cosecant e x cubed, and then you're going to have cotangent e to the x cubed. So here is our x. It appears there and there. So in our example, this is what's inside of our cosecant function. So it appears here and here, just like before. But it's a chain rule. Now we have to do the derivative of our inside function. So I'm going to just change colors here every time I do the chain rule, just so you can see. The next function is e x cubed. What's the derivative of e to the x cubed? e to the x cubed. And then finally, we have another function inside, which is the x cubed. So we have to do the chain rule again. And we get 3x squared. But I find with these ones where the x is in two spots, you feel like maybe I should do something different here, because it feels bad writing it twice. And it feels a little bit different. So I just wanted to point that out, that it is actually the same. It's not bad there. OK. So that is the end of our unit. There's some practice. I'm going to give you guys a handout sheet as well.